Hi. The actor Bob Hope used to invest in waterfront properties. When asked why, he said, because they aren't making anymore. It made him very rich. So is this video about waterfront real estate? Nope. It's about the digital equivalent, a much better one. It is wireless spectrum. There's only so much to go around and they sure aren't making any more of it. So if you have a license to use a certain spectrum, it's like owning a piece of the digital waterfront. And because more and more companies want to use it for mobile services or fixed internet connectivity, the price of wireless spectrum keeps going up and up and up. For example, a US public company by the name of Strikepath, symbol SDRP, had lots of spectrum, which was mostly unused. The stock traded for 30 bucks a share. But because Strikepath did not meet its obligation to use the spectrum, as specified in the licenses, the FCC, the US Federal, Federal Telecommunications Commission, forced the company to sell its spectrum. How much did that spectrum go for? Suffice it to say that the stock trading at 30 bucks was taken over by Verizon for 180 bucks per share, a six bagger in less than one year. Fair disclosure, I owned a few shares of Strike Path due to some time in sleuthing. Carl Icahn, by the way, owned some too, although he owned much more than me. Anyway, after downing half a bottle of Barolo to celebrate, I asked myself, are there any more companies around with unused Spectrum licenses? For a while, I could not find any, but then I learned of one here in Canada. The company is Terago, symbol TGO, trading on the Toronto Stock Exchange. It has lots of Spectrum licenses that, just like those of Strikepath, up to recently it hasn't been using. So the stock languished, doing humdrum cloud business. But a few months ago, Terago's board finally saw the light, put a new CEO in place, who is now testing 5G technology for fixed internet access cheaper than the current cable of fiber services provided by the established Canadian players, Baron Rogers. If Terago tests work out, it could eat up a big piece of the internet market of the established players, if. How big is the company now? Not big at all. Its entire market cap is about 110 million Canadian, about 88 million bucks US, and it also has some debt for an enterprise value of 170 million Canadian, or about 135 million bucks US, a small cap stock. The stock trades at two and a half times sales and 2.8 times book value, which is not low, and the 23 times EV2 EBITDA, which is high, clearly not cheap. And it is also losing money. But equally clearly, the value is not in the current cloud business, but in the spectrum licenses. So how much is its spectrum worth? It is here where the comparison to real estate comes in handy. In real estate, the unit value is price per square foot or per acre for large tracts of land. <clears throat> in spectrum licenses, however, the equivalent value unit is price per megahertz pop. Pop is short of population. This value measures the capacity of data you can transmit and receive via your spectrum multiplied by the population in your license area. The more data you can transmit and the more populous the area, the more valuable your spectrum. For an existing population, the limiting factor is data transmission rate, which depends on the amount of spectrum and its wavelength. Today's commercial spectrum is mostly longer wavelength, which means lower amount of spectrum and capacity. The value of that spectrum is in the region of one buck per megahertz pop, based on spectrum auctions run by the FCC. Terragon spectrum, on the other hand, is 5G with very short wavelength, also known as millimeter wave, where the capacity is far higher than existing spectrum. So you would think 5G's value per megahertz pop should be higher, right? But you'd be wrong. Up to now, the value of millimeter wave spectrum proves to be lower than established spectrum because the shorter wavelength does not travel as far and experiences other issues such as blockage by walls and potential environmental concerns. All this meant that up to recently, millimeter wave spectrum was not much in use. <clears throat> However, little by little, the issues are being solved, so more and more companies are using millimeter wave spectrum. In the US, several companies are using 5G millimeter wave technology, and in Canada, some of the big telecom players began to use it, sort of, but without enthusiasm. Like Strikepath, Terago didn't use these licenses either, 
which, by the way, are perhaps the largest spectrum asset in Canada. Yes, but now Terago begins to use it. So once again, what's the value of its spectrum licenses and how to go about computing it? Start by looking up the company's filing on cedar.ca as the Canadian equivalent of EDGAR, the American corporate database maintained by the SEC. Count the megahertz spectrum the company has, multiply by the population in the license areas, and you'll find the number of megahertz pops. Or you may even find this number somewhere in the filings. Look for it. Then take a look at the company's enterprise value and divide by that last number to get the implied price per megahertz pop that the stock is trading at. So is this cheap or expensive? Nah, -uh, I won't tell you that. You do the sleuthing and find out yourself. All right, you say, but even if I do find it out, how would I know if this number is cheap or expensive? Well, I told you there are frequent spectrum auctions in the US, which you can follow. These could give you relative valuations. You'll find that most of these are for lower frequency, higher wavelength spectrum, like 3.5 gigahertz. And as I said, at the recent FCC auction, 3.5 gigahertz spectrum sold at about one megahertz pop, one buck per megahertz pop. But do check to see what's the latest number. As for auctions of 5G spectrum, there haven't been that many, and the few that were were done at far lower prices of only around 1 to 2 cents per megahertz pop, or 1 to 2 percent of the lower level spectrum because of technical issues. But as these issues are being resolved, millimeter wave spectrum prices are inching up. So what's the chance that millimeter wave spectrum prices will rise from 1 to 2 pennies to a full $1 per megahertz pop? That is 50 to 100 times? No, that's unlikely. But because the technical problems associated with millimeter waves are being solved, it is quite possible, in my opinion, that 5G millimeter wave spectrum, with its huge capacity advantage, could reach a valuation of 10 cents per megahertz pop, or one-tenth of 3.5 gigahertz spectrum. If it does, Terago will be a 10 beggar. What if 5G valuation goes above that? Then Terago may become a monster multi beggar But will it? depending on solutions to the technical problems of the 5G millimeter wave spectrum. And it's here where your sleuthing would be key, especially if you have a tech break background like me, preferably engineering and telecom. Because remember, nothing is for sure, so you got to sleuth it out in detail. For example, Terago's trial deployments may not succeed, or they might, but only partly. Or the issues may prove too hard, and more issues would appear. Like which issues? Well, you see, the 5G standard was first designed with the expectation that millimeter wave would only support shorter distances. In an early test done in the US Northwest a few years back, 75 meters, about 200 feet, seemed to be the maximum possible. However, a few months ago, a trial in Italy managed to achieve a distance of six and a half kilometers with millimeter wave, nearly a hundred times further than what was recorded in the US five years ago. And some engineers claim that even longer transmission distances could be feasible. Will they? Well, if Elon Musk Starlink can transmit millimeter wave over 250 kilometers from satellite to small dishes on rooftops, then 5G millimeter wave on Earth should be able to achieve three kilometers, no? Well, maybe. The problem is that with longer distances, the round trip delay in the wireless software protocol is no longer valid. And now I'm speaking as a former rocket scientist, this would require recalibration of the guard time to prevent packet collisions when the link switches from downlink to uplink. So is this a showstopper? I don't think so. I've just been told by one person that this problem had been fixed in the latest 5G standard update, although I haven't verified it yet. The first test for such feasibility would be Verizon selling 5G products for fixed wireless networks which can come this year, I'm told, perhaps soon. Anyway, to cut to the chase, Terago stock is at present about seven bucks Canadian or 550 US. How high can it go? That depends on how much its licenses are worth, which in turn depends on the valuation per megahertz pop. And how high could that go once 5G products appear? That of course is the half a billion dollar question, or maybe a full billion, or maybe even more. It's up to you to sleuth it out and find out. Go for it. That's all for today. Let me know in the comments below what you think of all the above. Just subscribe to the channel. 
Email this video if you like it to your friends so they subscribe to. I'll see you next time. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching.